what's going on guys broken profit here welcome back to the vlog here is hoping that what day is this the the end of your week is going well you're going into the weekend and that you have had an awesome holiday season thus far speaking of holiday season we are rapidly approaching the new year and with that being said we still have some seats left at this upcoming webinar which is on oh that's that's nasty i'm over here wiping my nose i'm sorry y'all <laughs> we still have some seats this upcoming webinar which is going to be on road openings especially for the new year the new year the start of a new year is a perfect time to open your roads to things like finances success love things like that we're going to clear away those blockages by doing some very targeted rituals showing you how to do them for yourselves for loved ones so that you can actually start this new year off on the right foot we're not just going to keep saying every year like we have done the last 20 something years oh this is going to be my year while you do the same old mess and you get the same results no this time we are going to actually put our spirit where our mouths are and actually get some forward movement going into the new year or you can just continue to be broken lonely it's on you i'm not going to judge you if you would like to get a seat at this upcoming webinar, all you've got to do is go to my website, which is www.trueconjure.com. Go to the section for videos and web webinars, and you will see the current webinar section that is on road openings for the new year. Okay. If you are not able to make it live, because I get asked this question every single webinar, y'all know when black folks clap, that means we're serious. Every single time I have a webinar. Someone asked me, is it going to be recorded? Yes, it is going to be recorded. So go ahead and book your seat now, even if you're not sure whether or not you can catch it live, because it's going to be January the 3rd at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you are not sure whether or not you can catch it live, go ahead and book your seat, because as soon as the webinar is over, you will be able to watch the recording. All right, now let's get on this video. If you were not already aware, I'm recording this video live. So if I happen to look off to the side, it skips around kind of odd. It is simply because somebody was in the chat <laughs> acting a fool like Didi. But anyway, if you look at the title of this video, you see that the, the video is about three simple I, title, I think I was going to title it Hoodoo Shut Up Spells, but I really hate crazy titles like that. Really, it's a video about ways to control and compel someone. I did a webinar on it, but let's do just some three simple ways to gain control over another person. Now, when we talk about control, it is not the Hollywood version of it, where you do a working or a spell and then someone's like a zombie, oh, what do you want me to do, master? That would be nice, but that's not how real magic works. Instead, real magic is about influence and exerting a certain form of pressure. We're all under pressure at all times. And whether we like to admit to it or not, the world around us exerts a certain amount of mind control on us. No, none of us wakes up going, man, I can't wait to pay these bills. But yet, when uh, when they send them, we know that 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 has to be done or else stuff is going to get cut off. That type of pressure always steers us to perform a behavior that we may not have automatically done because we, let's face it, we would rather be on the beach somewhere, somewhere chilling. But no, we've got to go to work because the bills have got to get done. So there's always pressure being exerted upon us to do certain things and that is what these workings are designed to do they're designed to exert a certain amount of pressure on someone spiritually to get them to do the things that we want them to do now the first one is something so simple and i guarantee you you have done this before and a lot of times people will use this controlling spell um, as a form of a, a love working <clears throat> excuse me y'all know i've got a cold and for this one, I know somebody's always, you hey, always want to use products. The simplest form of this particular working right here actually doesn't involve any products. I'm just using some controlling oil simply to add a little bit more oomph to it. Now, this one is for someone that you have access to, let's say close proximity to, and you want to maybe exert some type of control over them. All you got to do is take a little bit of controlling oil. 
right? And th- and you'll see why people use this for a love um, love spell or a way of controlling someone to get them to see you romantically. Because this is something we've all done if you were Southern when you were a little kid with your little crush. Because this does, it, it triggers a certain part of your brain. And basically, you take the little bit of the love oil, and I like to put it on my thumb, but some people, you know, it, it, all, it all depends on the situation. But I like to put a little bit on my thumb, right? And you'd be surprised at what people will allow you to do because people are polite for the most part. Even if they don't seem that way, a lot of people are, are just polite and, and they don't want to rock the boat. And so when on with the controlling oil on your thumb, all you're going to do is touch the person's body somewhere, right? And you're going to write your initials on them with the controlling oil on your thumb. And that is very simple. Remember when we were little kids, you would do that. You would, you would draw your name and a heart in somebody's palm. They always started liking you when you did that. They always started liking you. That's one of the, the simplest spells. But with this, it doesn't have to be in the palm. It can be but it doesn't have to be. And the reason why I said before that people will allow you to do things because they they're, they just don't want to rock the boat is because someone's going to feel that and they're going to wonder well, what type of time you on. <clears throat> but a lot of times they're not going to do anything because they, they don't want to come off as impolite, right? So as long as you're not like gripping somebody's hind end and doing that, because that'd be a little weird, right? But st- stick to the shoulder the back, something like that, and go ahead and write your initials. What you will find is over time, and and I'm talking fairly quickly, we're talking over the course of the day, if you were to do this at work, you'll find them coming and checking in. Uh, Hey, I'm going to get something for lunch. You want anything? And it will always happen when you were hungry, you know, or, or, or you know what, maybe you want to go to the snack machine, but you left your wallet. And they'll go, hey, I'm going to snack machine. You want some? It creates kind of a link between you and that person where they are kind of just doing the stuff that you either would or couldn't do for yourself. It, it is like the perfect thing. I absolutely love that working. And I wish there was a way to do it by proxy because I know one of you is going to ask, well, what if I can't get close? Well, then you can't do this one. Okay. But I will show you one you can do now the next one well this one (laughs) involves some controlling incense and you don't have to touch the person with this one you don't have to touch the person what i like to do and you'll see the first one you have to get really close this one you get kind of close and the last one you don't have to be anywhere near them so with this one all you're going to do is get some of their footprint dirt now I know we live in a literal world and you guys, I mean, that you, you, you think very literally. So when I say footprint, you're thinking that you've got to like see a, a perfect track in some dirt because y'all will always ask me, well, Prophet, what if it's on concrete? Just look at where the, where the foot was and sweep some dirt up from right there. Okay. You don't have to see an outline of a footprint. It's fine. As long as the foot was there, you're fine. It can be inside of an office building on carpet. If you see the foot was there, pull up some of the lint. Nick Noggs, stop making it all hard for yourselves. So you take some of that, you mix it with controlling incense, and then you burn it. And while it is burning, you recite Isaiah 55, 11, and then at the end of it, you tell them what it is you want them to do. It can be give me a raise. It could be, you know, um, a polite request for some yum yum. <laughs> I might, I might need, I might need to edit that out. I might need to edit that out. It could, <laughs> yeah, I probably need to edit that out. Anyway, it it, it could be um, a, asking for a loan for some money. Whatever the case may be, you want to recite whatever it is you want them to do as that incense is burning. And rest assured, it shall be done. <clears throat> now the last one, <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna leave that in, y'all. Don't y'all don't don't cancel me. It was a joke. 
It's the cough medicine. It's the cough medicine. The last working, the last working, and y'all are gonna like this, is all you need, all you need is a plain white candle and some salt, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me, a plain white candle and some salt. The first thing you wanna do is take the salt and pray the 23rd Psalm over it, all right? Therefore, making it, say it, bless salt, absolutely. When you bless the salt, you want your breath to hit it, all right? You're gonna pray the 23rd Psalm into the salt and just set it aside. It doesn't matter what salt it is. Guys, I'm gonna tell y'all a secret. Some of y'all wasting so much money. They, oh, thinking that Himalayan pink salt um, is, is more powerful. Thinking that volcanic black salt is more powerful. If y'all don't stop, this is, look, this ain't even Lowry's or Morton's. This is some great value iodized salt. It Listen, salt is salt. Y'all need to quit. Quit. Now, after you've prayed over the salt, light the candle. Now, you don't need your Bethlehem. I probably should have did this ahead of time, but I didn't. And guess what? I'm not starting over. So you, you're going to scratch the name of the person or their initials into the candle. And then you're going to take three pinches of salt and sprinkle it right onto the flame. As you're calling their name, Jane Doe. Jane Doe. Jane Doe. And then you recite into the flame. Now, you don't want to burn yourself, but you want to get close enough so that your whisper, because you want to whisper. Do not let your voice go above a whisper. Okay? You're going to whisper. Let me hold $20 to the mark. Let me hold $20 to the mark. Let me hold $20 to the mark. You whisper that into the flame. I know I, I, I did that jokingly. But the reason you're whispering <clears throat> is because, now y'all are going to love this. Y'all are going to love this. What is the one voice that we all listen to? The one voice that we all listen to. The one up here. See, we uh, we may not take advice from our parents. We may not take advice from our, our pastor, or parish priest, a guidance counselor, n nobody. But you're going to listen to yourself. That's why a lot of y'all in trouble now. You're going to listen to yourself. So when you whisper into that candle in this working, your voice becomes the voice in their head. So what you are whispering they start thinking. And what, what's the easiest way to make somebody do what you want? Have them think that it is their idea. Have them think it's their idea. As long as it's your idea, they may not do it. But when it's their idea, oh, they own it. They own it, doggone it. So there. Three workings, three different um, distances, one very close. One moderately close and one distance doesn't matter. I know which one y'all gonna pick, but they're all pretty much um, the same as far as effectiveness and go out. Don't just, remember what I said, don't just write this stuff down, start practicing it. Don't just put it to the side and go, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put this over here for, for when I really need it. No, you need it now. Start practicing it now, okay? Start getting good at it now. So when you do really need it, then you know you have gained proficiency. You can practice this now, okay? Go ahead and, 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 and see if you can get somebody to bring you lunch. See if you can get somebody to call you. See if you can get somebody to text you. Start practicing it now. I cannot stand when people fill up all these notebooks thinking that one day in, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of, of the fight, that they're going to sit here and become so good at hoodoo that now they can just get results like that when they've done nothing at all. Spirituality, like anything else, requires first you got to learn the method. Then you got to perfect the method. 
then you get consistent results. Not, well, I just picked it up and now I'm going to get good at it. Y'all better go. Y'all better go and get good at it now. Anyway, guys, thank y'all so much. Hopefully the video makes sense because I'm going to have to edit this. And, um, you know, y'all y'all pray for Didi. I'm just kidding. If you were here in the live, you know what I meant by that. But thank y'all so much for watching this video. Um, run, run them donations. I really appreciate it. Start the new year. If you don't want to run it directly, then buy a, um, a seat to the webinar. And with that being said, you guys have been amazing. Profit out.